Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And we're back to the days where there's not too much out there at the minute. Obviously the lads are in Spain, so we will chat about that in a minute. But I want to lead with something that I've actually just seen just this minute, which I saw on a German news website. Apparently Wout Weghorst has done an interview with uh, kicker.deutschland where he drops massive hints on the club that he wants to go to next in the article kicker quote him is saying for me the whole package has to be right we are having our fourth child at the minute and we have traveled a lot as a family in recent years i'm looking for a permanent place for us so home the netherlands is definitely an option ajax is the biggest club in the netherlands I don't need to say any more. So yeah, Valt Vegos has done an interview and in this interview he's spoken about how he wants to move away permanently and not on another loan, obviously, and how he wants to, to go home, back to the Netherlands. I think I think you read it's not even reading between the lines, it's there in black and white, isn't it? He, he said he wants to go home due to you know, moving around a lot as a family recently, and he's also mentioned the Netherlands. Now, there's been, uh, sorry, Ajax and the Netherlands. Now, there's been a lot of reports. It has quieted down within the last week on uh, on Veghorst, actually, but there has been a lot of reports about which clubs would be looking at about Veghorst over, you know, the last month or so, even when he was at the Euros, I was going to say since the Euros has finished, but even since the Euros, there's been a lot of stuff where FC20 were looking at him, then Ajax came in for him. I think Ajax, Ajax just makes sense. It's a good fit. I agree with him. It's the biggest club in the Netherlands. It's the kind of league where I can see him doing quite well. I, I don't think he's, he's good enough for the Premier League. I think he's shown that both at Burnley and at Manchester United, but I think he is good enough for the Dutch league, and, and obviously he's Dutch. So he won't look at the Dutch league like we do with some, you know, where, where we just don't think it's a, a, as good as obviously the leagues in this country. But yeah, Valt Veg also dropped a massive hint on where he wants to go next, and he's saying he wants to go to the Netherlands. So fingers crossed we can get this one done and dusted within the next week or so. Actually, just sticking with Vegost. Apologies, I did I did wrap that one up there, but on today's show with me working nights, I've not been looking at anything so I'm actually just doing the scouting and looking in the places now as I'm as I'm recording it kind of um, and another club who are in for him Trabzon Spore I think this is a new one I don't recall there being any news about Trabzon Spore being being in for him uh, but they are saying they're expecting a decision from him in a very short time offers are on the table he needs to pick so according to Turkish journalist Emre Sel now, he says Trabs on Sport are expecting Burley's Valt Vegos to make a decision about his future in a short time with apparently Leicester City and Ajax. Obviously, we just mentioned Ajax also in the mix. So, yeah, just, just to quickly add on to that last one, apologies for, for quickly sticking this on the, the, the story that I had just wrapped up, but it's looking like Trabs on Sport are also in the mix as well. If I've missed that one over the last few days, I apologise. That's the first I've seen it, but this article makes it sound like it's, it's common knowledge. Um, I had actually missed that. Um, but yeah, Trabs on Sport looking at Valvegos as well. But I think the interesting bit from that article for me is the fact that they're expecting it. I mean, it says in a short time, so that could mean anything from the next five minutes to the next two weeks, I suppose, couldn't it? But yeah. Fingers crossed, it is done. Like I said, as I ended the last one, it is done in a short time because I think everybody just wants to draw a line under it now and move on. Now elsewhere, like I said, there isn't too much out there at the minute, but just for full transparency, I know I've mentioned it already, but I am currently working nights, which obviously means I'm sleeping during the day, which means I may miss a few things. So if you do see something, feel free to give us a nudge, whether it be in the YouTube comments or on Twitter or Facebook, or you could just DM us. Feel free to send something our way. I have just again seen something going back back to the Valt Vegos thing that apparently, and I do not believe this for one second because it comes from Sport Witness, is that we've agreed a deal to sell him to Turkey. But if he's there saying comments about Ajax, I doubt that very much. Um, but elsewhere, this is good and bad news, I think. I think a lot of people see this as immediate negative, and I, and I do understand why. I'll get into the negative aspects in a minute. But the TV selections for Sky Sports have now been confirmed until January. Burnley have been selected, I think it's 10 times. And that's the good news, the fact that it's been all fully booked in until January. Like we know where we stand now as match-going fans. We can plan our train journeys, 
our tickets, time off work around that. And that's a good thing. And I think people are missing out on forgetting about that. They're just criticising the kickoff times and saying, oh, we're a cop leaving on TV 10 times, what a joke. But there is that side of it. Obviously, for match-going fans, you're West Brom away, uh, for example, has been moved to 8pm on a Thursday night. I mean... Obviously, that's not very good for the even West Brom fans who don't live within the immediate vicinity of the Hawthorns are going to find that difficult. If, and if you're going down as a Burnley fan, the game's not finishing until 10, 10, 15. You're not out of the ground till, you know, probably 10, 30. I mean, obviously, the car park as well and, and on the motorway, even going up for 11. So you're not on for after one o'clock. And it's that is an absolute piss take, that side of it. But the club put this article up themselves on their website and they say the club can confirm that several Claris fixtures have been selected for TV broadcast as the EFL and Sky Sports have now announced all broadcast selected Skyvet EFL matches from October up to the FA Cup third round the weekend of the 11th and 12th of January. Now we already had obviously August, September and October in the books. We, we already knew about them ones being on TV but now we have all the way up until January. And like I said, I do think that's the good side of this. I just feel like some of the kickoff times in here are absolutely honking. Uh, but the games that have been chosen for TV are Preston North End at home, Millwall away, which is now a Sunday at 3 p.m. Sunday at 3 p.m. down in London. Again, you're not going to be setting off back till half five, six, so that's going to be a late one. And with all due respect, apart from Millwall and Burnley fans, who's watching that? Like, no, nobody is going to sit down and think, I can't wait for Millwall Burnley, later, apart from Millwall and Burnley fans. So why that's been given top billing on on Sky Sports, I do not know. Um, then then the one I've already mentioned, West Bromwich Albion away. That's on Thursday, the 7th of November, 8pm. Absolutely honking. And the next one, Bristol City away, 12.30pm, honking. Uh, then you've got Middlesbrough at home, 8pm, Norwich on Friday, 6th of September, sorry, uh, and the Bristol City away, Saturday the 23rd of November, 12.30pm, sorry, I didn't, I didn't read the dates out, did I? Then you've got Middlesbrough at home, Friday the 6th of December, 8pm, even that for me, Friday the 6th of December, 8pm, I know it's not horrendous, but even I live at the other side of Burnley to the turf, and the night matches can be a bit of a pain in the backside. And there's already enough this season, so there's going to be even more now they've moved them to some of these to, to, to Friday nights. So then you've got Sunday the 15th of December, Norwich away, 3pm. Norwich away on a Sunday. Nobody's going... Nobody's watching that, sorry. Um, then you've got Sunday the 29th of December, Middlesbrough away, 8pm. And then Sunday the 4th of January, Blackburn Rovers. Apologise for swearing there. Um, but that will be 12.30pm. And someone were complaining about that on Twitter. Say, yeah, I can't believe they've moved the Blackburn game to 12.30. They're always that time. Very, very rarely do you see a Blackburn game that's any later than 12.30. Obviously, some people are pointing to the one where we won the league last time out at Ewood. But that was, you know, strange circumstances. Uh, that won't happen again. Uh and, and there's an extra two games on top of that, apparently, that have been moved as an adjacent live selection. So our trip to Hull City has now been moved from Tuesday the 22nd of October to Wednesday the 23rd of October at 7.45pm. And Swansea's visit to Turf Moor will also now take place on Sunday the 10th of November at 3pm instead of Saturday the 9th of... I, these Sunday 3pm kickoffs annoy me. I just don't get why we are on TV at that time. And even in that situation, I don't think we are. It's just a Sunday three o'clock kickoff for no apparent reason because someone else is on TV. So yeah, th these Sunday three o'clock ones aren't even the worst, but they seem to annoy me the most. I just don't understand the logic behind them. Um, but yeah, there's some absolutely honking kickoff times in there. Obviously the full list has been on your screen throughout this chat. Um, but if you do want to see it, you can see it on the club website, burnleyfootballclub.com. But yeah, 10 Burnley games, I think it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight have been selected for TV, apologies, and then two more selected for Sky. So, yeah, 10 games have been moved, eight on TV, um, up until November, not, not November, sorry, up until um, January. Elsewhere, and not much out there at the minute, so I'm going to quickly mention, obviously, the lads. that you, You'll have seen this on the club socials because they're doing some decent content surrounding this, but the lads have gone to Spain. You Even if you don't have Clarets um, Plus, which I don't, you can still watch a video clip of the lads out in Spain on YouTube. There's a, a clips of them setting off, clips of them landing, going into the airport. And it's interesting to see there's some players there at the minute that we haven't seen too much in pre-season. I'm pretty certain James Trafford's there. He's not featured very heavily on the video, but there's a shot of him walking in 
to the airport with a cap on. Sander Burge is there. And again, a few people obviously are a little bit worried about Sander leaving and stuff, but he is there. But he's one of them, unlike Mike Trezor, that he knows that it benefits him if he goes to these things and, and doesn't throw his toys out the pram. Because obviously, if you if you even if you move, it benefits your fitness and your development if, you, if you're in pre-season training. So it's good to see him there. It's good to see Trafford back as well. I know... Um, some people obviously expecting him to move on because of some of the things that you've seen and obviously I'm expecting him to move on as well but it's good to see him back obviously after his extended break after the Euros but yeah I do like this sort of content when football clubs put that the behind the scenes sort of like training camp vibe content up uh, it's good to see Nathan Redmond back as well cousin Nathan uh, he's obviously had a bad injury recently um, and uh, Jordan Bayer he's, he's in the video there's been some mentions of him being injured as well Al Dakil's in the video and so is Ekdal so uh, yeah it's it's interesting to see some of the lads that uh, may or may not have he featured heavily so far in pre-season but yeah uh, the lads are in Spain and fingers crossed the club keep it up with this content because I, I do like that kind of stuff. I just quickly want to say before I go, there's a nice interview with Brownhill, Josh Brownhill on, on the Radio Lancashire Twitter page. It's 13 minute long. He talks about relegation. He talks about downtime in the summer. He talks about how he's connected to the community in Burnley and how he tries to do a lot in the community. He also talks about the upcoming season and Scott Parker as well. I'll retweet it. So if you just if you don't have the... Um, BBC Radio Lancashire Twitter account you can find it on mine um, one thing I did find interesting what he said about Scott Parker is not loads has changed but he's put his stamp on it and then how he talks about the aim is winning the division again so interesting take on Scott Parker how he's not really changed much but he's putting his own little spin on it but again with him being a head coach rather than a manager he might not be able to put as much of a spin on it as he wants to but yeah Apologies, there's not much out there. As for tomorrow, like I said earlier, I am working nights, so we'll see whether or not I actually get round to it. But if it's another quiet day, I probably won't bother doing it. Um, I only did this one. I dived on it because of the um, the breaking news in regards to the Sky Sports fixtures. And then as I quickly was just about to do it, I saw the Valt Vegos comment. So, yeah, um, if, if it's a quiet day tomorrow, I'll definitely have it off because I'm working nights, so it's it's just easy for me. And, and I may or may not miss things as well. So if you do see something, give me a shout that I may or may not miss, whether it just be in the comments on um, Facebook or Twitter, just just drop us a message or, or put reply to one of the tweets and I'll uh, and, and then I'll definitely see it because I might miss some things with me being on nights this week. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everyone for listening. We'll be back potentially tomorrow, but if not, we'll, we'll be back when there's something to talk about, definitely.